So in the last video, we crossed the military checkpoint Wasn't to show you firsthand how the Los Angeles burn zone looks like, specifically in the Palisades and Malibu areas. Now we'll go deeper into the fire zone and look specifically at a lot next to a zone with burnt down rubble and discuss with an engineer what it takes to rebuild a home in the fire zone. So where are we now? Uh, now we're in the hills of the Pacific Palisades okay. overlooking the PCH. And um, where were we right before? Was that Malibu? That was considered at the border of Malibu and Pacific Palisades. I'm not okay. sure exactly, okay. but it was basically Malibu. Let's say that because on the PCH, everybody considers that Malibu. And so what's going on here? Um, so if you look at all these lots, um, people are starting to clean up. This one looks like it's been finished already. So they took all the debris out. Uh, they took all the debris out and they leveled the land. This is now ready for construction. So at this point, an architect is going to come. Engineers are going to come, they're going to make plans, submit to the city, and start developing this land. So is this where you would take over now as an engineer potentially this if is, they have an architect? They exactly. need to have an architect. If they have architectural plans ready to go, that's done by an architect, I'd be able to step in right now and do the structural okay. designs. Because the architect designs it, and then the engineer makes sure it's... Exactly. Now, with... Sound. Exactly. With, uh, with these lots over here, a lot of the people who are opting to rebuild their house they're using the exact same architectural plans they had before. So a lot of the people already have architectural plans that are ready. Um, all they gotta do is just make sure that it's up to today's codes and they're good to go. Uh, but if they wanna build a brand new house with their style, then it's gonna be, it's gonna be a, a whole design phase portion of the construction. Okay. Should we look at the place next door or do you wanna take a look at this? Uh, let's go, let's go inside a little bit. But again, when you're walking inside these lots, all you gotta do is be careful for a little steel or glass uh, debris that's on the floor. Mostly nails and glass. Nails are everywhere, you see? Nails are everywhere. Hold on. When you build a house, you build with maybe 100,000, 200,000 nails. And they're all on the property. The good thing is people started cleaning up over here, so they made a path. And this path is pretty clear of debris. Not 100%, but it's clearer than most lots. See, they already started sweeping up. You can see the concrete floor. Before, all you'd see was ash, ash and coal. Chimney survived. Every structure has a chimney that survived. And so that's very common, right? You see a lot of these. Yeah. The concrete and brick, they don't burn as easily, or obviously as easily as wood. Wood just goes up in flames. This can hold flames for, you know, a good, a good, a good heat. Wow. I mean, I guess Still that's what it was built to do, right? It yeah, built to... exactly. <laughs> that's exactly what it was built to do. If you walk around this area, there's a lot of like gas tanks. They took it out, obviously. There was a gas tank under this barbecue pit. Okay. But there was a lot of gas tanks that if you drive by the Palisades or Malibu, you'll see a giant X on it. That means that the city came and checked it already and it's safe. It doesn't have any gas inside. Okay. Um, but if you don't see an X on the gas tank, if you come into one of these properties, stay away from it because that can explode. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, like, I'll try to find one and point one out to you. Is this just not, I mean, it's just remarkable that this is intact. I yeah. mean, I don't think it works, right? Or maybe it does. Or... Uh, hopefully, I'm, I mean, I, I see the lines are nice and safe. They haven't been burnt. If you look underground, look, look. Yeah. The, these power lines or probably the gas lines. They want to replace this though. They probably want to replace this. I mean, yeah. the whole thing is going to be replaced. No yeah. one's keeping this. Yeah. They're demolishing everything and rebuilding it from scratch. How about these, uh, like these shrubs and trees? I mean. Yeah, all was... the leaves burned off of it. But, I mean, they're probably dead trees at this point. I just don't know. Like, I don't know. It doesn't look like it's live. Do you think this can come back to life? There's a possibility. I'm not an arborist, but there's a possibility. That's a good point. You are an arborist. Look at this football. Some little kid lived over here. Sad. Whoa. Yeah. And then this is the view. That's the view. That's the view they had. Best in the city. Are some of these structures, though, they're, they're all elevated, right? Uh, yeah, they're all built elevated, so they have a view. Every structure okay. in this whole vicinity over here, they're built on top of each other. So every lot has a view of the ocean. And this was probably, look, the balcony? Yeah, it's a guardrail over there. It wasn't a balcony, it was more of a deck. 
like uh, the spa is over here. It wasn't attached to the house. The house was over there in that portion. You would walk out into this little land. Into okay. this, uh, but this is not yet, uh, this still needs demolition, right? And yeah, the whole thing. This is not engineer right? It's not salvageable. No, you can't sell it. It's not good. Well, if I was an engineer on this project, I would say this whole structure is no good. Even the foundation, go. Well, salvageable is one thing, but yeah. we're talking about like, this is not yet where a civil engineer would step in. This is where oh. still they need to finish demolition. They need to finish demolition, but in the same time of doing demolition, we can do design. Okay. It doesn't have to work at in you know different they don't phases. Have to wait. Exactly, okay. they can do it all in the same time. But you, the only thing I'm saying with that lot is that this lot is ready to build on. Right next door, yeah. Right next door. They're ready yeah. to build. They're not ready to build because they still have a cleanup to do. So once they clean up, they'll be able to build. But they're ready for designs if they want to. Again, be careful of the nails. It's very dangerous here. I mean, we're not showing the floor that much, but... Glass everywhere, nails everywhere. Nice shoes. They're not really made for uh, these kinds of sizes. No, they're but not. I guess you... But I'm in the office more than I'm on, you know, fire-ridden lots. We got some dirt, glass, but yeah, so this lot is ready. Yeah, and the lot next to it is ready, and the other lot, all those three yeah, are ready. Lot after lot. And look, so this was a pool, right? Yeah. So the pools are intact. The pools are intact, but who knows? Maybe they have some cracks. With all the heat that happened to the to the structure, okay. uh, the concrete might have cracked a little bit around it. You know, when heat touches uh, you know materials, the material wants to expand. So it might just be worth it to just demolish plan on everything. Demolish and start everything. Rush. Yeah. Forget everything. Salvaging is more of a headache because yeah. then you have to test. Then you're not sure. Then exactly. Who knows? You build. Exactly. And then you realize something that now. I mean, part look. Of when, your... when you test, you don't test everything. You test little sections of it. So you might have tested the section that's possibly good, and right next to it is a section that's possibly bad. So you don't know. It's better just remove everything and. And if you have a crack in your pool, then now you have a problem with the city potentially, right? You have a problem with the soil. Yeah, you have a problem with soil. The, the leak can cause water to go into your house. They have foundation issues. There's a whole mess you're going to deal with later on. What about this? Is this something that they could want to salvage because it's also historical and it was part of their house? So or? me personally as an engineer, I don't design out of brick at all. So I would not salvage this. If they want to keep, if they want to keep this on the site and build around it, fine. But if they want to build a new, uh, a new brick uh, chimney, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's okay because brick just wants to topple over during an earthquake. Okay. There's no reinforcements inside, it's just a bad, bad structure. So what do they build a chimney out of today? Nowadays, you get a manufacturer to build a chimney. So you, have, you go to a store and you, you, know, you tell them the sizes and they'll design one for you. Usually made out of steel. Really? Like, yeah, steel sheets, something like that. Okay. Wow. But brick is no good. It's going to topple over. The lot next door is also ready. That, that looks really clean, so let's take a look at let's that go. one end of their of their line you're gonna wait till they finish everything and then could get to you but the city does it for free the city does it for free like I'm they pretty make sure it build they do. ready huh they make it build i'm pretty ready. sure yeah but they go lot by lot and by the time they get to this lot who knows how long it's going to take so if the owner wants to get started right away they hire their own private people to come over here and do it so is this good dirt or land i mean i know you're not a soils engineer but what would you do you would get a soils engineer or yeah so um, a lot of people have a uh, soils reports from before um, they can update it to today, to 2025, um, the year 2020-2025. Or, yeah, they'll get a new soils engineer to come over here, test the soil, see how deep the foundation needs to go. And Do then, you need that for this? Yes, because it's on a hillside, you would. Okay. Because it's on a hillside. So just look at this lot. Pristine condition, right? Well, now it is in pristine condition, ready yeah. to build. It's still not 100% level. There might okay. need some, like, you know, they might need to remove some dirt here and there to make everything straight. But is leveling good. hard to do? No. You get a machine and cut it. Okay. Not a big deal. And then you can start doing foundation. Yeah. And then build. Yeah. Depending on the soils report, that's the, that's where you're gonna find out if the foundation is gonna be expensive or not. Can they build a basement here? They can, but I think it adds square footage. I don't think you would in this lot. You want the view. The more square footage you have with the view, the better it is. Okay. But that's the architect. Uh, it's for the architect to determine, not, to, not for me. Okay. And look, look. This is the interesting part. This whole neighborhood burnt down. This whole neighborhood burnt down, but right next to it, right next to it, there's two giant water tanks that could have been uh, used to put the flames out. Really? Yeah. Do you think they had enough water then? I don't know if they can get here. It's too much fires. It, even too if much. they had enough water, just too much, too too hard to get in here with the fire trucks. Yeah. If it was one house that burnt, that's a different story. But the whole neighborhood, it's too hard. How are you gonna 
But you're Look thinking they had enough water, they were full. I for sure had enough water. Okay. In, the, in these tanks, I would assume so. If it was filled, 100% yeah. enough water. Wow. What are these? Are these, uh... Uh, this is so, I guess when it rains, okay. the water doesn't go into the other, or the, the trash doesn't go into this person's lot. Okay. I think. Those are concrete walls, right? Yeah, they're separating, they're little retaining walls, about four or five foot high. They're separating this lot from their lot. Um, if it was up to me, I would redesign it. I would redesign everything. I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider salvaging. Don't salvage anything. Yeah, it's okay. not worth it. It's not worth it. Got it. You're going to spend so much money in construction, just do it right. Yeah. Do it right. You see another lot there. Yeah. So. And you can see, look, of... you can see that it's, it's kind of, you see cracks all around it. You see signs of burnt materials all around it. Like, it's not good to save. You're going to see a lot of buildings soon at some point. I mean, yeah. it's all going to come at the same time almost, right? It's gonna... <sighs> we don't know. The problem is we don't know. Some people are going to wait to have their neighbors built before they do. So uh, we don't know exactly when they're going to start. Uh, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Um, every homeowner is going to be different. Some people have money now. Some people have money later. So depending on when they want to build, they'll, they'll start. But for the next 10 years, this area is going to be built, maybe even longer. Some structures are going to start right away. I'm even getting some plans right now, uh, finalizing some plans to be done for this, port, this part of town here in Altadena. Um, but for the next 10 years, people are going to you know, try to save some money. And 10 years? We may, maybe even more. Maybe even more. Wow. Some people won't want to build right now. They have this lot. It's just a headache. Going into construction is a headache for a lot of homeowners. It's a big headache. It becomes a full-time job. Um, and a lot of people are old. They don't want to deal with this. They might just sit on it, give it to their kids. Who knows? Everybody's different.